I'm freaking out right now. Driverless cars on the road in San Francisco. With no one in the driver's seat. No hands on the wheel. Self-driving cars are gearing up for a takeover. <sighs> Whenever I think of self-driving cars, the scene with Will Smith from iRobot comes to mind. He's driving his futuristic Audi TT and he tries to manually drive the car and the passenger is like, What do you think you're doing? I'm driving. By hand? That's where we're headed. Let me explain. This movie came out 20 years ago in 2004. Fast forward 10 years from then, Google released this video with their self-driving Prius. And fast forward another 10 years, we have Google with their own self-driving driving division called Waymo and I was lucky enough to try one of these self-driving cars by Waymo in Los Angeles recently. Self-driving. Self-driving. Self-driving cars have been involved in 280 crashes. Thanks to full self-driving. How can I rely on a car to make the right decisions? Humans are having a hard time. All cars will be self-driving. But that's not real yet. Now, are they better than the average human? <laughs> Hello everyone, today I'm testing this Waymo self-driving car and I actually really quickly want to talk about how does this car work. So this car relies on three systems. The spinning thing is a LiDAR, this is a radar, and these are camera systems. Overall it has 29 cameras in the car which gives it like 270 degree radius. And it gives my initials MG on the top which might not be visible on camera because it's spinning so fast. And there's cameras all around the car. And the way you book it, you book the car on Waymo One app and you can call the ride easily. When it shows up it gives you about 5 minutes and then you can easily unlock the car from here and get in. Let's show them this car is just Jaguar I pace I feel like this is one of the most luxurious cars. Unfortunately, it's not available for sale, but these are going to be used to replace Ubers, Lyfts, all those ride-sharing companies. And right now they're testing it in the Hollywood, Koreatown area in LA. So slowly they're start they're going to start rolling out all over Los Angeles, all over rest of America. Let's show them the inside. Our car is here. The cool thing is, it doesn't even open for anyone. You know, if you're wondering like, oh, anyone can get in, it's actually locked. Like you can see it doesn't open. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press unlock on the app and see the door handles popping out. Isn't that cool? That's dope. <laughs> and now we're going to get out. See, by definition, self-driving car is any car that can perform three tasks. It can perceive the environment, it can control the vehicle, and it can actually navigate from a point of origin to the destination. But what most people don't understand is that there are different levels to self-driving. Society of Automotive Engineers classified that there are six levels of self-driving. And level one can be actually automatic braking, which we have for the last five to ten years in cars like Mercedes and BMWs. And level two is where we are right now. Now. This is what we have in Tesla, where the driver must remain engaged and understand the environment, but car can kind of drive itself. But where we're headed in the next decade is level five. It's full driving automation. The vehicle would not require any human intervention at all. It won't even have a steering wheel or it won't even have pedals. There would not be any limits to geofencing. It can go anywhere, whenever it wants, anytime. So now I'm going to show you how to start the ride. So all you do is you press start ride. So they have actually cameras all inside the car as well. There's a camera right here, up here. There's a cameras inside looking at us. Like surprisingly, they have this thing to, for support so you can interact with the IT person. You can play music. So these sensors that we see here are other cars. So these are tangles right here are actually other cars. And the smaller ones are humans. So these small dots that we see that are moving, those are humans, these are cars. Yeah, so I think overall there's been a comparison of Waymo versus Tesla. And I haven't really tested Tesla, so I don't know. But uh, Tesla has self-driving without the LiDAR and radar, and this car has it all. So in my opinion, this is more safer. But because Tesla has a much bigger network, I think Tesla has much more data points to make better decisions. But in terms of when it's super rainy, I think this car will make better decisions because it can track everything. See, the biggest problem with self-driving cars is not even the technology. I think we've overcome the technology, but it's the trust. According to this study, 68% of drivers are afraid of self-driving cars. There are instances where self-driving cars had issues. There's been cases where the self-driving cars did not pull over when the cops tried to. Or I have friends who got stuck at an intersection and it was quite embarrassing and they were not happy with their experience. What are your first impressions, Akeem? 
I'm freaking out right now. I'm so used to having someone like in the front seat driving and like, you know, you don't normally see this type of like device going like this, but overall, I, I think it's great. I think it's great. It's definitely the future for sure. Electric is in, gas is going to end soon. So yeah, I give it like an 8 out of 10. Humans on average, we drive 3 trillion miles a year. And overall, this car has logged more than 20 million miles in their journey. And but they are getting better as they test it out and release them on our road. People are scared about the safety, but I think once they take one ride, they're going to make a better, like, they're going to be more comfortable. It's one of those things. And the entire premise, in my opinion, for driverless cars is to reduce the number of cars on the road and increase carpool and increase ride sharing and that's why there are companies like Zooks that are essentially going to monetize by charging the end customer a small amount five to seven dollars for a ride which was amazing like if I don't need to own a car I would love to live in that future where I don't need a car a lot of women actually consider Uber like unsafe and I think this will help that like you know you don't have to deal with a dodgy driver for women I think this will feel way more safer there are two big use cases that I see with self-driving cars one is trucking Human truck drivers have actually a limit on how many hours they can drive per day. Per law, they have to rest for around 12 hours, whereas robo truck can drive 24 seven nonstop. American Trucking Association actually came up with a stat where they said there's been a shortage of 80,000 truck drivers. There are more truck drivers that are retiring than actually becoming one. And the second big use case is, is ride sharing. I think this will actually make rides much cheaper as these cars can run 24 seven with a lower market marginal cost as they don't have to pay the driver itself. See, there are some major hurdles that needs to be solved in the next coming decade. Like for example, if you're at a red light, the camera will tell it to move forward if it sees the light turning from red to green. But I still have questions about like, oh, what happens if the red light is broken? What happens if a self-driving car gets into a tricky situation where the crash is unavoidable? How will this work in other countries like India, where, <laughs> where I grew up actually, but in India, like we have so many unidentified objects we don't have roads like here so is this gonna be something that's only gonna be available in countries like US and some developed countries in Europe or is that something that's gonna be available in every country another concern is that self-driving cars will actually replace uber drivers in our lifetime it would not be possible to completely replace uber drivers I feel like they will coexist how will the insurance claims work for this like for example if someone gets in a, into a collision with this who's liable because there's no one driving. Is the computer liable? Is the Waymo liable? Is the person who hit the car liable? So that's a big question for the insurance companies to figure out. There is a lot of questions that I have that I don't know the answer to, but if you know the answer, you can comment down below. The key promise here is that self-driving cars will reduce the overall deaths that happen due to human drivers. Because unlike humans, these cars aren't emotional. They're not distracted by your Instagram feed or they're not part of a road rage. Well, what do you think? Do you think these cars will replace all human drivers one day? Also, if you're interested in learning about how there's a new technology that will make us not charge our gadgets anymore in the future, click this link.